Okay, it's Cool Dude Klim here, and welcome to another Cool Dude Klim's update, or uh, whatever you want to call it. First off, for all of you fans of my cartoon, The Star Kids, and I know you're out there, I have finally started work on episode 7. Can you believe it? But look, I've got the script all written out right here. It's a little bit here and there, it still needs a little bit of refining, and there's some typos and things, but, you know, it's all there from start to finish. And I'm going to put a link in the description so you can have a read-through of it if you wish to. And also, I've started work on the drawings, and I need some colour bins, but yeah. I've absolutely no idea what I just said there, but I'm just recording this on the fly and having to wing it. This voiceover, that is. And yes! Even the Space Invaders are going to make a brief cameo. Now there is one thing I do need to go over, and that's the voice for the bad guy, because I know that in the past I did his voice, but um, he's going to be in this episode quite a bit, and I really think that somebody else should voice him, because I'm sure someone out there can provide a much better voice than I did. So, yes, I'm holding out auditions, and if anybody's interested in voicing him, well, let me know. So, on the Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop side of things, the homemade record player project is currently on hold, because first I want to get a new cartridge for it. I want to get one of those Bandpa cartridges, because it has the nice flippy needle, and sounds much better than that silly old Crosley cartridge that I've got in there. Only trouble is, they don't sell them here, so I'm going to have to order one all the way from America, which is going to cost me about $15. That's... Shipping cost included, so that's I'm going to be about maybe nine or ten pounds. I don't know. I don't really know what the current currency conversion is, but I'm also going to give this a complete mechanical overhaul because when I turn it on, there's a lot of low frequency vibration. Could be this idler wheel. I think that's the main culprit. The motor suspension still seems to be nice and soft, but. You know, I think like 40 odd years has made this go a little bit hard. It's still got plenty of grip and everything, but yeah, there's a lot of vibration. I mean, if I turn this on, I can feel that. And speaking of vibrations, you can probably hear next door's music playing right now on this voiceover. We've got to do something about him. We're all sick of it. Everybody's sick of it. Wish we could just get him evicted and out of here. And everybody's going to be a lot happier again. Future Clem cutting in here because as he was editing the video, he saw something that he forgot to say about. I've trimmed down that impedance matching circuit so it's a much smaller footprint. And when all this is done, I'm going to put that in the homebrew record player. We now return to our regularly scheduled program. Now the homemade tape recorder project is finally going to get a playback amplifier. A fellow YouTuber contacted me and provided this schematic, which I'm going to try. I'm not taking any credit for the circuit, but I'm going to try it out. I also got a few computery projects coming up, and I don't know why my voice went computery! God, I think I've got the most horrible voice ever made, but yeah, at least I'm not afraid to use it. So firstly, I'm going to get this computer set up, and I'm going to install Windows XP on it because, well, for starters, it would be nice to have a Windows, a dedicated Windows XP machine. And also, my video editing software that I use is just too old for anything newer than Windows XP. Yes, I could upgrade to something else, but why bother? It does what I need, so what's the point? Also, I know I'll be able to run Adobe Flash CS5 on there because. I've tried that on Windows XP and it works. The video capture card also, that's going to work on Windows XP just fine. The only thing that might be a bit of a problem is the touchscreen. Because I tried that on a Windows XP computer and it didn't work. Just like my Xbox 360 gamepad didn't work. But I found a driver for that and that sorted that problem. So, yeah, the touchscreen shouldn't be too much of a problem either. If I just find a driver for it. Also... I'm going to be giving Windows LTSC a go. Now, apparently this isn't available to the general public, but that doesn't mean I couldn't get my hands on a copy. This is supposed to be a really, really good version of Windows, like the best version of Windows 10 ever made, because 
Unlike other versions of Windows 10, it doesn't have all the bloatware and all the other crap that you get on, like, you know, the home versions and the pro versions. Apparently it's good for gaming as well, so I'm going to give that a go. Also, I'm going to be trying out Windows 10 AME. This is supposed to be a customized, bare-bones version of Windows 10 with all the bloatware taken out, all the telemetry taken out, and all that kind of stuff. But have a look at the file size here. I mean, this is the Windows 10 LTSC ISO. Okay, it's about 3.5 gigabytes. Windows 10 AME, which is supposed to be a cut-down, bare-bones version of Windows 10, is bigger. But I'm still going to be giving that a go. And on real hardware, not a virtual machine, because that's what everybody does. And, you know, I want to see what this can and cannot do. So we'll be seeing it on a real computer. So what else have I been up to? Well, I'm making a completely brand new guitar sample bank. And also, I'm doing a horns and a strings library too. It's pretty much done. I just need to go through all the files and make sure everything is good. Then I'm going to release that and do a video of it on my Music Wizard channel. Speaking of music, I'm getting back into making chip music. So I've done a little something here in OCC Famitracker. In fact, I've done quite a few things, but this is the latest thing I'm working on. I think it sounded pretty good so far. And, oh look, I've changed the font on my desktop. So, anyway, they're all going to be rendered as NSF files. So they can be played in standalone players, such as NSF Play. Let's just hurry that along a little bit. Yep. Now I might do ZX Spectrum Beeper music too because I found this program Bipolar that does 1-bit ZX Spectrum music. Now this thing I've got loaded up isn't one of my songs but I'm just using this as an example. I'd better not play too much of that because it is a copyrighted song. And I found something on Shiro's website where I can convert these to AY files. And here is that very same thing that you just heard. Now it's a standalone AY file. Which appears to have two, song, two sub songs in it. So it's They're both the same, so I don't know what's going on there, but. Yach! I've also been experimenting making Atari ST music. So here's a little thing I'm working on. It's a work in progress. And this is what I look like if I forget to shave. But did you know, the bass and the drums is all on one channel? Well, the drums cut into the bass, you know, like on a lot of 8-bit music. So yeah, I'm pulling out all the stops, doing all the chip tune tricks here. Of course, it would help if I actually went here to stop it recording. Of course, speaking of Atari ST, I've tried out some of the native Atari ST uh, music trackers, like this one here called Maximizer or Maximum, I don't know how you pronounce it. I haven't really been able to do anything with it. This one, however, and I've no idea what it is, Seems a little more user friendly, and I came up with this. Hello, this is Dan. Come on. Hello, Dan. Hello. 
yeah, ignore that. I just needed something to try it out with. That was one of my friends back when we were kids, just mucking about, and I still have that recording, so I thought, meh, I might just as well put that in there and see if it works. Anyway, that's the end of this update video because I've got a ton of editing to do. I think I've already spent over like 15,000 hours rabbiting on, so yeah, I'm just gonna go. So until next time, goodbye.